Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. In this video, I'll be taking you through how to do a spot repair on this E-Type Jaguar. So we're going to start off by checking our colour. I've mixed it up already. I've then done a colour card and uh, it turned out that that colour there was a little bit too, on the yellow side, a little bit too colourful. So what I've done is I've put a little bit of white in there first and then I'll put that little bit of black in there and I'm going to do another colour card. And uh, we're going to have to, because I'm doing this one in base coat, clear over base, we're going to have to put some clear coat over that once the base coat's dried. So I've sped it up to 1.5 speed here just to um, stop the vid from getting too long. And uh, what I'm using here is 180 grit. So what happened here is the guys from the mechanic, uh, the mechanic shop down the road, they accidentally um, scratched this bonnet when they were putting the engine back into this car. So um, they didn't really want to go and paint the entire bonnet because uh, it gets quite a big bonnet. Uh, it's the whole front of the car is uh, this single panel. So to fix it, they just decided that they wanted me to do a spot repair on it. So I just gave it a quick sand back so that this filler is going to stick and then I'm going to fill the low spot there. There was a slight dent and a few couple of scratches there too, big chips. So this is just a uh, two-pack fine filler. Uh, you don't want to use rough filler like what the uh, panel beaters may use on big uh, big repairs. This is uh, quite fine. It, it won't have the pinholes and stuff like that. So this is the colour. I've, uh, I've dried it down and then I'm going to put the clear coat over the top, as I said. And I'm just going to dunk it into an old thing of clear that we've got sitting on the bench. And uh, you don't have to wait for the clear coat to dry. Uh, the colour won't change once the clear coat's either wet or dry. So it turns out that it's still a touch on the yellow side, a touch too colourful. So I'm just going to put a touch more uh, white and black into it just to grey it out a touch. And then I'm just going to paint it. So I um, uh, didn't end up doing another colour card there. So while I was doing that, this uh, ended up drying. I used the heat gun in between as well just to get a bit of warmth into it. So I'm using the old uh, piece of uh, 180 that I used on the orbital sander before, the same piece. We're using that and uh, blocking out that filler. Once I'm pretty happy with it, I'll throw that out and grab a piece of 320 to remove those 180 scratches. Um, so give it another bit of a block back with the 320 and um, then I'll grab the orbital sander and I'm going to put the uh, interface pad, which is that soft foam uh, pad there, and I'm going to use 400 grit now to remove the 320 and any 180 scratches that I may have missed when I was using the 320. So next up, we're going to just give it a blow off, and uh, we're going to put some 1K primer on it. So I'm trying to do this job uh, on a time frame. So the, the customer needed their car back the next day, so I needed to get it quickly painted that night. And it took me about 45 minutes to do this job from start to finish, so it's a pretty efficient time frame too. I'm just going to mask out just that tiny little square where that bit of filler is. And just with a bit of low pressure, I'm going to be using my 1K. So I've got some 1K that I just leave in one of my guns. It's, uh, it's an old gun of mine. It's the first gun I ever bought, this one. Original GTI, but it's still going hard, still going strong. So... Um, yeah, just low pressure here, just a small amount. Apologies about the camera angle there, I missed out. I'm gonna get a little bit too close there. And um, now I'm just using the heat gun to dry it down. So I actually decided to leave this uh, drying time in just so that you can see with one thin coat how long it actually takes to dry this one cat. It's actually quite quick. So just remember that it is at 1.5 times speed, so uh, maybe just add an extra uh, 30 seconds to the drying time if you are to do this. So that's about all it needed and um, I'm going to take that off and that's about dry down already. So I've, I'm just feeling it with my hand to double make sure that it is nice and dry and I'm just getting a 800 grit soft back sanding sponge is what that is there I'm using at the moment and um, I'm just bringing it around in a sort of semicircle around that repaired area so that any of my overspray that's going to hit it is going to actually stick and then just a real light scuff over the top of that 1k primer 
just feeling over it, making sure that there's no rough spots, no imperfections. Have a good look at it, make sure there's no pinholes left behind. As it turned out, there wasn't, and it came up quite good. And next up, I'm going to be using a bit of grey scotch Bright just to go around the edges. It helps you blend in, and it, it will help you polish it up later on too. It'll polish into those uh, scotch Bright scratches nicely. Once that's done, we're blowing it off, and then we're going to use some wax and grease remover, which I've got in this squirty bottle here, and uh, just wipe that off with a rag. So I like to do this sometimes before I um, before I master the cars up. It turns out that this car was um, in nice uh, nice order. The paintwork's in pretty good order already, so it's nice and shiny. So if it was really dull and faded back, I would actually probably um, give the panel a polish before I carry out my spot repair. So for the masking stage, I've decided to speed it up to double speed just to continue on through the vid. But you've still been able to see every single uh, spot that I've done, every single step that I've done to get this thing painted. And also, we've also included the polishing stage at the end of it. So if you hang around, you should check that out. So just doing our back masking on the front edge there and grab our masking plastic. Make sure you get this up the right way. There is a, a top and a bottom of this plastic. So you can read the masking on there and it actually says paint a certain side. If you get it up the wrong way, the paint will actually flake off. So just opening that up and we'll then grab a nice sharp razor blade and cut around in a fairly decent size. Um, I like to give myself a lot of room when, um, when I'm doing these spot repairs and the excess uh, overspray can just be polished off quite easily as you'll see at the end. So I'm not getting overly uh, fussed with uh, false edges and uh, anything like that because I know that I've got so much room there that um, I'm not going to put any paint there. It's just going to be a touch of overspray that would just polish straight off. So I've decided this was um, the best way to do it and also the quickest. And the final result I was actually quite happy with. So. Hang around at the very end, there's a couple of links as well, a couple of my favourite uh, my favorite picks, um, a couple of um, links there, check them out and have a look at my channel too if you haven't, give that subscribe button a hit, like my vids too, feel free to comment, I'll also answer any questions to my, the best of my abilities. So once the masking's done there, we're going to... Um, start mixing our colour up. So as I mentioned before, it's base coat colour that I'm using here. So we just uh, thin that down to a two to one ratio. So two parts base coat colour, one part reducer. And then we use a filter to put it into our gun. And as far as the clear coat goes, I um, actually already had a little bit mixed up from the previous job. It was just a little bit in the can, so that's why we always keep it. And it was just enough to um, do this uh, spot repair. So. That was, a, that was pretty good. I'm using the Devilbus GTI Pro and GTI Pro Lite. And this can here is actually the blending thinner that I'm using, DuPont Centauri, AK350 is the number. It's a good, uh, good um, blending thinner, quite widely used here in Australia. It's uh, reasonably priced and it comes in a big can too. So next up here, I'm wiping it down with a wax and grease removing solvent on uh, a wipe on rag and also a wipe off rag. Make sure it's wiped off correctly or else you'll be left with a bit of a film in between your paintwork and the panel and the previous paintwork. So just plugging my gun in here and giving it a good blow down with the air in the spray gun and a cat cloth as well. So I'll slide it back down to single speed here, just in uh, real time, and um, also added the audio in so you can hear the spray gun as well. Apologies about a few little parts here that um, go out of focus, uh, it's actually a little bit annoying because I got right through the editing of this job and come up to this part and I was like, ah damn, and a couple of little bits went out of focus, but um, I still decided to use it. Um, as it's mostly pretty good. 
so it covers really quite well um, this colour because it's got a lot of white in there. The white base coat uh, in standoffs does cover quite well. I only really needed those, those two coats and then um, that was it. So I gave it a couple of minutes in between and then I'm onto my clear coat now. So I'm just going just clear just around to where those scotch bright marks were just up to the scotch bright and then I'm coming back grabbing that uh, AK350 blending thinner putting that into the gun and you may have noticed I actually had a little bit of uh, clear left in there just a touch and that'll actually help it blend out a little bit too and flush that through the gun and we'll then just go over the edge of where my uh, clear coat finishes with this blending thinner you can actually replace this uh, blending thinner with just normal thinner and you can use it at about 75% uh, ratio thinner to about 25% or so uh, clear and that will actually blend out as well. But this blending thinner actually just fades in a lot nicer. So that's it. I, I only decided to put one coat of clear on it and then the blend. Um, so that just... I, I didn't, uh, I'm not going to actually de it because there's not many bits of dust in it. It might have had one or two tiny little bits, but uh, for the job that we're looking for on this, uh, it's perfect. Um, I'm actually quite happy with it, got it done in a good time frame, and the next morning, uh, this is, I came straight in, and we're on to the polishing. So I'm using the, uh, the Juice Super C, and just the Roots uh, buff here, just the normal rotary buff here and just going over that edge. I left some of that masking on down near the chrome work and the bumper bar just to um, stop covering the, uh, the work and the car in uh, polish and compound. So just giving it a good work in. As, I, uh, as you may have seen just back there, this is 1.5 times speed, um, but it's still good enough. You can see exactly how I'm doing it. So you're just running that buff over and just working that compound right into the entire area where your blend was. Once that's done, you give it a wipe off with your micro fine uh, polishing cloth, microfiber. These are inexpensive. I bought a packet of 20, I think, for about $20, so about a dollar each from your local auto store. Even in the trade, we found it's cheaper just to go down to the shop and buy them from the local super cheap here in Australia. So I'm changing over for the polishing step to the Roops Bigfoot, and I'm using the Menzerna Fine Final Glaze. Quite a good one, this one. And uh, just the Roops Bigfoot will remove any of those swell, swell marks because it's an orbital polisher. It's not uh, rotary like the buff. So just working it over the entire patch, same as what we did with the uh, with the rotary buff. Then just giving it a good wipe off. So that just about brings the job to an end. I'll give you a good up close look uh, once we've finished wiping this polish off. Have a look around the rest of the car. Check it out. I'm pretty happy with how that, that edge looks nice. Um, I'll be happy on my car. It beats the other option of spending uh, lots of money on in spraying the whole bonnet and taking all those uh, chrome work off and all that. And uh, yeah, so here we go. This is the this is the car. Nice uh, old E-type Jag, 4.2 liter. Pretty nice thing to drive. Got to drive it around a couple of times. So. I like my old cars personally. Check out these couple of links at the very end. And um, subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for watching. And this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.